Welcome back to Flippin' Friday, episode number 23. And today, we're not just building a budget $450 to $500 gaming PC flip, but I'm also gonna be showing you a ton of alternative options for you to use, whether something's not in stock or you can't replicate the same deals that I did, just in case if you're also just trying to build a normal gaming PC for yourself. Let's get into it. And for the performance parts today, first up we have the Intel i3-10100F, paid $55 for this on Amazon Warehouse. This is a tried and true choice here at ZTT. For the motherboard, we're pairing this with the Gigabyte B460M DS3H motherboard, paid $66 for that, also on Amazon Warehouse. For the RAM, this was actually a really good deal. This is a YOLO 2x8GB kit clocked at 3200 megahertz. I actually bought a 4x8GB kit for $60, so technically I only paid $30, and then I can use this in two separate builds so really good deal on that and then for the graphics card finally we have the msi ventus rtx 2060 i paid 170 dollars for this on mercari and of course everything is linked down in the description including the alternative parts which we'll talk about soon and real quickly before moving on if you're watching this video then i know you're all about those good pc hardware deals and team group's upcoming black friday and cyber monday sale is 100 the spot to go for that that first link down in the description will take you here where you can see all all their latest BFCM deals on desktop DDR4, DDR5, laptop RAM, 2.5 inch SSDs, and even NVMe drives. And hopefully you already know that I've featured a ton of these products in my videos before. That T-Force Delta RGB RAM kit and MP33 NVMe SSD are crazy popular options in our ZTT community. And the countdown for when these deals go live is right here. Use Team Group to upgrade your gaming PC to play all the latest titles and big thanks to them for sponsoring today's video. Now for the CPU motherboard combo, because the prices of B460 motherboards continues to fall, we're able to find combos like this for only $121, which is absolutely ridiculous. The only other comparable combo in terms of price is something like the Ryzen 5 2600 and a cheap B450. And even though the 10100F only has four cores compared to the 2600 six cores, it still performs better in most games, which is why I'm using it so often in these videos. And the SSD that I'm installing today is the PNY CS 1030 500 gigabyte NVMe drive. And I picked this up on Amazon for $35. You absolutely do not need to get the same exact model as this one. And for a budget build, I would honestly just recommend literally searching for the cheapest 500 gigabyte or one terabyte NVMe drive that you can find and going with that one. The Team Group MP33 is always a reliable budget choice and Silicone Power also has one around that $35 mark as well. So I haven't made this mistake in a while. It's kind of just an oversight. And most people that don't like truly dial in, in the aesthetics probably don't care about this, but this PNY CS1030 SSD, it's got the slightly blue PCB. That sticker on there covers most of it, but since I am going for an all stealthed out black build, I am gonna go grab one of our M.2 covers for this. You probably don't need to repeat that, but someone like me, it's gonna bug me if I don't. Real quick, shout out to Corsair. This is their brand new XTM70 Extreme Performance Thermal Paste. They sent over a bunch of boxes for me to use. I have no idea if it's actually good or not, but we're gonna be using it. I don't think it's intended for things like the Tem 100F, but we get Extreme Thermal Paste nonetheless. Thank you, Corsair. Now that our motherboard is fully prepped and ready to go, it's time to check out this case. And this is the Gamex Spark Black Steel. And I paid $63 for this brand new off Newegg. And this is definitely a very unique design. Now it is micro ATX size, but this is flirting with ITX sized cases. There are certainly some compromises on here, but I think this is gonna turn out to be a really, really sleek, stealthy, all black build. Now, some things that I'm noticing right off the bat, which are pretty cool is the backside has a tempered 
glass panel, but there is like no room for extra cables back there, which is why I'm not including cable extensions. Wait a minute, who are you? There is no sort of power supply basement other than in the front here, you can see that we have this SSD bracket and the power supply is going to be vertically mounted behind there. So I'm just gonna have to be super clean and stealthy with the cables. And again, there's no way that I would try to pack cable extensions into a build like this. And then finally, it also doesn't include fans. So I'm gonna be installing my own, just some extra fans that I had laying around. We'll talk about that in just a second. But overall, it looks really cool. Hopefully it's not a pain to build in because sometimes these smaller cases can be awful. Them's fighting words. <laughs> because this case doesn't have any extra fans, just like a true PC flipper, of course I do have a ton of extra laying around in inventory. These super overkill 140 millimeter Be Quiet fans are the only ones that I actually have four of. So I'm just gonna place them on the bottom for intake and at the top for exhaust. That way we have some nice airflow action going from bottom to top. And if you don't have any extra fans, then you can certainly pick these up for super cheap. The Arctic P12s are one of the best options available. And if you wanna go a bit cheaper, then up here sells five packs of all black fans, which would be great to use as well. So I just realized that I kind of messed up on this one if you are trying to follow this along at home. If you want access to the bottom ports of your motherboard, so like your USB 2.0, the power cables, and maybe a fan header and whatnot, you're not gonna be able to have access to it if you do install these bottom fans. The case is just too small. So what I'm gonna have to do is uninstall these 140 millimeter fans at the bottom, install the motherboard cables, and then reinstall the fan. It's kind of annoying, not a huge deal, but definitely something to be aware of whenever you're working with this small of a case. Now, next up, we have the power supply, and I just went with the tried and true Asus Tough 450 watt. This is 80 plus bronze in tier B, which is fantastic for the $35 on Amazon that I paid. And honestly, this is a really tough one to beat in terms of value. Now, 450 watts is definitely pushing it with the RTX 2060, but we can get away with it because our system is pretty low powered in general. The 2060 only consumes around 170-ish watts. And since this is a good power supply unit, it'll work. I definitely would not recommend pairing a 2060 with a cheapo 450 watt power supply. And in general, it's probably a better idea to go with 500 or 550 watts. But again, we'll be fine with this setup today. And the PC is almost complete. And the last part we got to do is the graphics card here. And this is the MSI Ventus RTX 2060. And at the time of recording, the $170 that I paid for it is still a pretty good deal. But you do have to remember that the prices of GPUs are continuing to fall and fall. So keep an eye on that right now it's a good deal but it may not be a good deal in like a month from now now there are certainly some alternatives if you are trying to copy a build like this the rx 6600 is usually just a tad bit higher performance and you can easily find one brand new for just a few bucks more and if you do want to stick down the used route then the gtx 1080 would be right up there with performance as well and the prices of those are starting to drop significantly just like everything else so the build is complete and here you have the full parts list and as you can see i paid 400 and $74 for this entire thing. And a build like this can definitely get some nice profits. Being able to advertise an RTX 2060 gaming PC appeals to a lot of the more casual audience, which is who we are looking for when PC flipping. And honestly, I'm really happy with how this ultra clean and minimal all black build is looking like too. And for the benchmarks of that RTX 2060 and the Intel i310 100F, here are the results that we got for that. As you can see, these are some really solid FPS numbers for literally any game that we threw at it. And shout out to Sam for the hook up on the benchmarking run. He's still employed here at ZTT, by the way, even after that PC part picker contest debacle, but he's on a very short leash. Hopefully he doesn't mess up the next one. And just like always, this build will be for sale over on the zaxtechthrift.com website. This will be going live on the upcoming Black Friday launch, so keep your ears peeled for that. And just remember that our builds sell super quickly, so join us in the ZTT Discord server for all the updates on that. But that's gonna wrap up Flippin' Friday episode number 23. Make sure you click the playlist on the screen now to make sure you're fully caught up on the entire series, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.